You know, in every kindergarten class I've seen, at some point the teacher brings out science. And usually it has something to do with butterflies, or maybe plants. But in particular, butterflies. They really are a great example of showing how things change, right? So a butterfly starts off as an egg, an egg laid by a previous butterfly. And out of that egg comes a tiny caterpillar. And that caterpillar goes around and eats as much as it can, and eventually when it's hitting a certain point of eating and growing, it starts to build a cocoon or crystallis around it. Upon that, it may look like it's dead, but it's really just changing. Out of that crystallis, a couple months later, or maybe even longer, comes a beautiful butterfly, fully grown and changed, and it emerges out to go out and find its way. Eventually, that butterfly will lay eggs, and the whole cycle comes again. It's a beautiful example about how life stages and how things change in nature. Well, in geology, we don't like to do much with plants or butterflies. We like to do rocks. And there's a great type of rock that also shows that process of change, or metamorphism. So today in this video, we're going to be looking at metamorphic rock. Well, in particular, we're going to be doing three things. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to just give you a definition of what is metamorphic rock. Where then we're going to compare it and uh, contrast it to the different types. There's a type of metamorphic rock that can come from contact metamorphism or regional metamorphism. And while those are big words, we're going to go back and explain what they are. We're also going to look at what is a foliated and a non-foliated metamorphic rock so that you can identify them. If you're looking at a rock, you can say, oh, this is metamorphic or, oh, this isn't metamorphic. So we're going to be doing those three things. So let's look again at what this term, vocabulary term, metamorphic rock. You know, like so many terms in science, metamorphic is actually a Latin word, right? We like to use Latin because for a science, there's only one language we like to be able to, or there's many languages in the world, but we'd like to use one language so that everyone in every culture could understand it. And so at some point, we just decided to use Latin. So metamorphic actually comes from two Latin words. The first word, our prefix, is meta, M-E-T-A, meta, and it means to change. You can look at that meta, M-E-T-A, and you think back to grade school. You learned about metamorphosis, right, where a butterfly is changing from a cocoon and a caterpillar to a butterfly, but it also means it's changing, right? So anytime you see M-E-T-A in a science word, you know it's talking about change. Think about metabolism. There's a chance of changing, um, changing energy, sugar in your body for energy. It's changing. So M-E-T-A means changing. The second part of metamorphic is morphosis. And morphosis is Latin for form. So metamorphic really is changing form. So it's a rock that is going to change form. Now for my class, we're going to add a little bit more to that definition. In fact, the definition of metamorphic rock is from my class is a rock that forms from either sedimentary or igneous rock changing from heat and pressure. Heat and pressure. So it's rock that forms from either sedimentary or igneous rock that changes from heat and pressure. So you start off with a sedimentary rock, you squeeze it, you heat it up, you get a metamorphic rock. You have an igneous rock, you squeeze it, you heat it up, you get a metamorphic rock. In the same way, you take a, uh, an egg, it becomes a caterpillar, it becomes a butterfly, a metamorphic rock was an igneous rock becoming a sedimentary rock, or maybe not, maybe just staying an igneous, but then becoming a metamorphic rock. It's a change. So a metamorphic rock is a rock that has changed. Well, the last part of our definition is talking about heat and pressure, and there's something unique about our planet. You can look at the layers of our Earth, and as the deeper you go on our planet, the warmer it gets. In fact, you don't have to go very cool, very uh, deep before you hit liquid hot rock or liquid magma. The deeper you go, the hotter it gets. And so as you take rock deeper, you're going to heat it up. Or if you take rock and push it together, you're going to heat it up. The same thing goes if you go deeper into our planet. There's more rock above you. And as that rock above you starts to push down, there's more pressure. And that pressure is going to help lead to metamorphosis. So remember, in order to get a metamorphic rock, you're going to need heat and pressure. Now, we can get that heat and pressure in different ways. In fact, we're going to look at the two different ways. You can have something called a contact metamorphism, which is contact changing of a rock, or regional changing of a rock, which means a whole area of rocks are going to be changed. 
So let's look at a contact metamorphosis. You know, we talked about how inside our Earth is hot. Well, that magma comes up through our planet and it's going to go up and form a volcano. We've seen this before that it comes up and it could create all one of our types of volcanoes. But in the process, it's going to squeeze its way through the rocks that are in our lithosphere, in the crust. And in doing so, it's going to push. Remember, one of our ways to get a metamorphic rock is by pressure. And so by magma moving up, it is going to create pressure. So one of our parts of metamorphic, metamorphic rock has just been met. The other part is heat. Well, in doing that, by going up, you're going to melt some of the rocks up around it. So as magma moves up, you get heat, you get pressure, and so you're going to get metamorphic rocks around magma moving. As a result, you get what is called a contact metamorphic rock. That's because magma actually is touching the other rock and creating a metamorphic rock. So you get really small areas of these, and this is what you might find in Oregon. There's some areas of the regional, but most of it is contact metamorphic rock. Now, not all metamorphic rocks are caused by magma moving up. You know, plate tectonics is a really important process in geology. It's moving rocks around. Our whole crust is actually being shifted by convection inside our mantle. And eventually, these giant plates on our planet, big pieces of the crust, are smashing into each other. Sometimes they just smash into each other and sit there, and sometimes one actually goes underneath the other. When that happens, you are creating pressure when they hit each other. You're also creating heat when not pushing against each other, they actually warm up. Or in case of subduction, as you pull it down into the earth, you're actually warming it up. Because of that, you can get entire regions of metamorphic rock, the entire regions of the heat and change to change rocks. I'm sorry, the heat and pressure to change rocks. In that case, you get what is called regional metamorphic rock, where entire areas are turned into metamorphic rock. A really great example of this are the Rockies. Here is an area where the uh, Juan de Fuca plate is being pulled underneath North America, and it's kind of shoving up the Rockies over in the central part of America. And as a result, those rocks are becoming metamorphic as they get shoved up into the air. You see a lot of metamorphic rocks there because of heat and pressure. So what does a metamorphic rock look like? And in some of the other videos, we saw that igneous rocks have a very distinctive look. There's nice minerals or crystals, and they could be intrusive or extrusive or felsic or mafic. We saw that sedimentary rocks have little bits of other rocks and could be formed from different types of weathering. But what about a metamorphic rock? Well, to be honest with you, metamorphic rocks just look weird. They don't fit in with the other rocks. In many ways, they're kind of like the teenager of rocks, because a lot of times teenagers feel like they just don't fit maybe with their family or their school. Well, metamorphic rocks just don't fit. They come in two different types. You can have a foliated metamorphic rock or a non-foliated metamorphic rock. Not really inventive with our names. A foliated metamorphic rock means that the rock has formed layers through the heat pressure. You know, look at granite. Granite's a really nice igneous rock. It's intrusive, it's deep inside the earth, and it's just a jumble of minerals. When you squeeze it and you heat it up, those minerals start to move around a little bit, and they can clump together to form little tiny layers, and it becomes foliated. And when you have a metamorphic granite, it actually is a rock called gneiss. That's nice. That's a nice nice. Ah, never mind. But it's a foliated metamorphic rock. Now, not all metamorphic rocks are so lucky that you can easily identify that way. For instance, sandstone doesn't form a really nice foliated rock. When you push it and squeeze it, a nice amount of sedimentary, and you change it and pressurize it and heat it up, it forms something called quartzite or some of the other minerals. Uh, I'm sorry, some of the other metamorphic rocks. It doesn't have any layers. It's just a jumble of these minerals. And as a result, it's a non-foliated metamorphic rock. So when you're out and you're finding a rock, you can tell if it's metamorphic by looking for those things. Does it not fit the others? Well, we'll see. Well, in this video, we did three things. The first thing I did was I defined metamorphic rock. Metamorphic rock is a rock that changes from a sedimentary or igneous rock from heat and pressure. And we saw the different ways that heat and pressure are there, either by the layers of the earth and can create something called either a contact metamorphic rock, which is from magma moving up, warming and pressurizing rocks right in a small area, 
or regional metamorphic rock, which is caused by rocks colliding and continents colliding and hitting each other. We then saw that metamorphic rocks come in two types, foliated, which forms little tiny layers, and non-foliated, which look all the same. And that metamorphic rocks are just kind of these weird rocks. Well, let me remind you how these videos work. If you're not understanding something, you can always hit pause or watch it again. Maybe take a break and come back and watch it all a second time. Or just hit rewind and watch it again. But always remember, just keep moving forward.